sunlight and start to show all the beautiful colors that God created. I hear the trees joyful cry. All creation gives you praise.
There is so much more, my church. So much more. Behold, I say you have not delved in to the riches of my anointings, my blessings. Behold, I say to you that it won't just jump on you. You have to search for it, say the Lord. You have to dig in deeper. You have to focus your life and change your ideas and plans and look into me, said the Lord. For I said to you, there's so much more. There is so much more. Oh, I love you. My love will never, never be dampened in any way. I will love you forever. But I say to you, take that which I have to offer you. Come unto me, said the Lord. Go into the secret place with me. Get your mind off things of this world that are all temporary. For I say to you that I am not temporary. My presence is not temporary. I say to you that I am an almighty God. And I stand with my arms stretched out to you saying, come into the holy place. Come into that place of commitment. That place of communion. That place of security. For I say to you there is so much more.
uh, he was he was up in the tree and Jesus stopped. I want you to remember that Jesus stopped. All he was doing was up there in the tree trying to see Jesus. But Jesus had a purpose and he stopped. I don't know about you, but I want Jesus to stop when I'm hollering out, don't you? <laughs> stop by here, Lord. Stop by here. Amen. Amen. I, I, I crave his presence and his presence has been with us this morning in such a powerful way. God is so good. Hallelujah. For those of you who don't know, in 2018, I had a pretty rough go of my life. Um, started out the year getting engaged, getting to go pick out a wedding dress. I, I thought it was going to be the best year of my life. I thought it was going to be amazing. And then on Father's Day, Dad got really sick, and we weren't used to him being sick. Like, I don't, I don't think I had ever seen him have anything more than a cold, but he was just not feeling good at all. So we went to the doctor, and he was diagnosed with leukemia. Um, so that started a little bit of turmoil in my life, and I was just like, you know what? We can get through this. We can pray. God's going to be with us no matter what happens. And then in August of that year, my fiancé passed away in a car accident. That day at work, I, I called the people that were supposed to come in so that they could come, you know, take over. And I was just sitting there and I was like, but who am I now? What am I supposed to do? I've got all these plans that I've made. We had our whole life planned out. We knew what we were going to do. But what am I supposed to do now? And then three weeks later, God gave me time to figure out what I was going to do because I was in a terrible car accident myself and I broke five bones total. Two in my right leg, one in my left leg, two in my right arm. And it was just, it was a hard time because I'm not the type of person that likes to let people do things for me. I like to take action and do things myself and something I've never done before. I like to learn how to do it. And I just had to sit there. And if you can imagine, your dad's really sick. You just lost your fiance and you're stuck in a hospital bed to just dwell on it. And it was hard. I'm not gonna lie and say it wasn't hard, but I had the peace of God through all of it. And the song that I'm gonna sing here is called Scars, and it's all about being thankful for the scars. And yes, the main message of it is being thankful for Jesus' scars that he got at the cross, but there's also the underlying tones being thankful for my scars. And I'm thankful for my emotional scars that God threw off this because without them, I wouldn't be who I am today. I became a stronger worshiper. I became more willing to do the things that God wanted me to do through all of that. So I realized, well, if he saved me from this, he saved me from a reason. There's got to be something. And then I'm also thankful for my physical scars because you can't really see them. I've got a lot there that I kind of keep hidden up. There was one moment, so I have a giant gash on my right leg, and I had lost a bunch of muscle there. They had to take muscle from my back to give me a calf muscle so that I could have the possibility of walking again, because they still at that point didn't believe I was ever going to walk again. Well, here I am. You know. um, and they wrapped it around, they wrapped it around my whole leg, and only the back took the front died after the surgery. and. I had this moment of just a little bit of vanity, and I was like, well, now I've got this giant scar on my back for nothing. And I never really, until I got ready to sing the song again for you today, I never really thought about what I said in that moment. And I was like, well, I didn't get that scar for nothing because I can walk now. Yeah, it now looks a little bit uglier than it would have been if I had gotten the whole muscle on my leg. But I'm thankful for these scars because they give me something to look at and to see the things that God has brought me through. Because I'm telling you guys, there were angels there the day of my accident. I should have been, I, I slid up in my chair so only my knees down got caught up, even though probably my hips down should have gotten caught up with the way that it was crushed. And there was, I had a gaming console with my feet. Let me tell you, that gaming console wasn't touched, so you know there was something down there with my feet. And I'm telling you, there was an angel in that car at my feet at that moment. And 
this song is just really dear to me because I've got all of these different types of scars. And I'm thankful for them because without them, I wouldn't be the person that I am to all today. And without them, I wouldn't really truly know who God is because he's shown me himself through this. So I'm going to sing this for you today. And I just really want you to kind of think about your own personal scars and how you can be thankful for them too because he's always there through all of them. How many of y'all are familiar with gun smoke? I mean on your own, not from me. <laughs> you can be looking up Psalms 34 and verse number 6. But on gun smoke, if you ever watched one of those that was more than an hour, y'all know what I'm talking about? 
you get to the, you get to walk into a little bit. Maybe you've had took a nap for about 20, 30 minutes during it. You wake up and you get in right there on the end board. Now you're wondering what's happening. You try to figure out what has happened since you've been asleep. Anybody ever done that? Even not with gun smoke. Maybe a ball game or, or some other show or whatever, something on TV. Anybody done that? Come on, I need to see that again. Okay. And you're trying to figure it all out and you put it together and then, and then it is, it is, it'll say, <laughs> to be, con I mean, uh, for the conclusion, you know, stay tuned or either if it's one of them kind that show it back to back. But if it don't, you got to wait a whole nother night or a whole nother week. <laughs> and by then you already forget about it. So, you know, I guess James Arness or whoever put it together, of course, I think he had a big hand in some of it, but uh, whoever put it together, they would, they would go, they would, uh, uh, they would start, start out the next time they showed that episode and they would say, the story thus far. Have you seen that before? You know what I'm talking about? The story thus far. So therefore, let me give you a little secret. If you've got a recorder and you want to record it, why waste your time on the first? You can just tape the second one and then you're going to get a little catch up on the second one. It'll tell you everything that went on. You'll see all the main things. You'll see, are, are y'all with me or do you understand what I'm talking about? Yep. It's kind of like watching a sport game. They'll show you the highlights. They'll show you the touchdowns or they'll show you the home runs or they'll show you the whatever, okay? And, and so um, if you hadn't been here for Psalms 34, and I, it just seems like I can't get out of it, but uh, I, I, I love the Psalms, amen? I, I don't know how many of you feel that way. I, I love to read what Psalmist David wrote through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I mean, when he was moved upon by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this guy here even reached into grace, a way ahead of grace period. Like you and I know grace. He reached into the grace of God ahead of time and, and found grace. And God was good to him and blessed him and all. But David was, you know, we, we can learn from their lives. David was a praiser. He was a worshiper. He, he, uh, uh, he made time for that, spent time in that, wrote a psalm, song after song after song, okay? Wrote psalms, as we say. And uh, so the story thus far, let me just go ahead and say this. We've learned up in the first part, and you don't have to go there right now, just wait for verse 6. But we learned up in verse 1 to bless the Lord at all times. Verse 2, we learned to boast in the Lord. We ought to brag on God and boast in the Lord. Give Him the credit, honor, and the glory. Verse 3, we learned to magnify the Lord. That's what Psalmist David said. And, and you know, we sung that song a few Sundays ago that uh, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. And, and, you know, He is. We need to make God bigger than our problems. Amen? Instead of making our problems so big. Some people make problems so big, they just get all woe is me and please feel sorry for me and you don't know what I'm going through and you don't know how hard this is and you don't know. And you know, didn't you appreciate Christina's testimony? She thanks the Lord for her scars now. You know, didn't complain about them. Thank the Lord for her scars. They remind her what, how good God is and what God did and how big God is. God was bigger than that car wreck. God was bigger than her daddy dying. God was bigger than her fiance. Uh, dying also in a, in a horrible accident on the interstate. And God's bigger than all that. Here she stands still in church today instead of out somewhere trying to sleep off an overdose last night or, or getting drunk or getting drugged up or something. Here she's in the house of the Lord on Sunday morning teaching other kids to put their faith and their trust in God. Amen? And, and so thank the Lord. Make God bigger. Boast in what God can do. Magnify the Lord. And then verse 4 said, seek the Lord. And if we'll seek the Lord, He'll hear us. If we'll draw nigh to Him, He'll draw nigh to us. If we'll talk to Him, He'll listen. Okay? You know, isn't it, isn't it something? We, we, we expect other people. Sometimes we call them or text them or Facebook them or FaceTime them or whatever you want to call it. I don't even know all that, but... I, I hear some of the terminology, 
And, and, you know, we expect somebody to be listening, don't we? We expect them to respond maybe. We wonder sometimes if they didn't respond or why, you know, or whatever. But if we'll seek the Lord, if we'll take time to talk to him, he will listen. And, you know, he's, he's the one that there's a song that says he cares and understands. He, he's one that can really do something about our situation and circumstances. Nobody else, you know what? Nobody else can really do anything. A few people can do, help you a little bit in some ways. But, you know, a lot of times they won't even feel sorry for you like you're wanting them to. When they get away from you, they'll start putting you down for dumping on them. But see, God won't do that. Amen? How many of you know what I'm talking about? You got friends like that. But I'd rather have it this way. I got friends in high places. You thought I was going to say low places, don't you? That's what most people's problem are. They got friends in low places. But I got friends in high places. Amen? He's like a father to me, and then he's like a friend. Amen? And he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. But, you know, if we'll seek him, he'll hear us. And then verse 5 said, Look to Jesus and be enlightened. And then Brother Swagger so profoundly said, when I tried to check out what he had to say about that, that when people look to Jesus, they'll be lightened. And Brother Swagger said, and such will be the case every time. I thought I was going to get some big explanation of what that meant. But you know what? If you'll look to the Lord every time, every circumstance, with every situation, you will be lightened every time if you'll look to the Lord. Amen. And again, I mentioned about like that snake on the pole that, that God told Moses to make. All they had to do is look at it. If they were bitten. And you know, I, I, I think about that when I think, talk about it a lot of times, when I talk about being bitten, being snake bit. You know, we get bit in this old world, don't we? I mean, sin will take its bite. The devil will try to bite us, and uh, people will try to bite us. You know, we, we get, how many of you have been bitten before? And you know you've been bitten. You've been bitten. Okay? If we'll just look to Jesus, and Hebrews puts it this way, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Why not look to him if he's the author of our faith and the finisher of our faith? Amen? He, he knows what's happened. He knows where we're at. And he knows where we're going. And last su Sunday, I think it was anyway, I emphasized a little bit about him being one who has keys to death. See, again, that's why, <laughs> that's why the devil might have thought he had got Christina and maybe another passenger in the car. But guess what? The Lord has keys to death. And I'm glad he does. How about you? I'd, I'd have been gone a long time ago if he didn't have the keys to death over my life. I've been up in some old airplanes in the military that I'm glad that he had his hand maybe underneath that sucker. Okay? Even when we were coming in for a landing before. God has been good to me, and I know he has the keys to death in his hands. Read about it, first chapter of Revelations. I won't even tell you where it's at. I'll make you look for it. But it's in there. And so now I'd like to, that was the story thus far. Now I'd like to sum it all up in 10 minutes. How many of y'all believe I can do it? Okay. And how many of y'all believe I can't do it in 10 minutes? Okay. Y'all quit learning to fall for that a long time ago, did you? But there was about eight of you, so according to your faith, so be it on you. I can't do it. I'm going to take about, I'll, I'll be through by 1 o'clock. But y'all won't be too hungry, will you? 
Some of y'all nervous as a cat right now on a hot tin roof. You're just afraid that I just might do it. So you're not even going to look at me right now. You're just going to keep looking down. You're going to keep looking someplace else because you're afraid that you're just afraid that this might be the Sunday that I decide that I'm going to get long-winded and just preach a real long time. Well, guess what? I ain't. And some of you are looking at me like, well, I'm sure y'all look at you, but I'm sure not going to smile. <laughs> now you're smiling. Well, I love every one of you, whether you're smiling or laughing or whether you're mad or pouting. I'd rather you shout than pout, though. Amen? To sum it all up, verse number 6. You can go ahead and put it up, 34, 6. Look, watch this. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of, did you see that? All his troubles. Let me, let me ask the question. Anybody in the house got any troubles? Nobody knows the trouble. That was a good song, wasn't it? Seriously. I wasn't making fun. I just, it just came to me. One more time. Anybody got any troubles in the house? Well, go ahead and help me right now. Say, this poor man. I'll be here. This poor man. This poor woman. Okay. Or this fat woman or this fat man, it don't matter who they're poor or not. Oh, oh, it didn't mean that, did it? Y'all know I'm cutting up with you. Don't How many of y'all know I love you? Not too many of you raise your hand then, but a few. But I do love you whether you think I love you or not. But this poor man, I like how that's worded. This poor man. has trouble sometime. This poor man's got some trouble, even right now. How many of you can say amen to that? Amen. amen. I, I love that verse. Trouble is, I like all of them. This poor man cried You know who he cried to? The to the Lord. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and he saved him out of all his troubles. Why don't we spend our time? Go ahead. Why don't give him praise? Why don't we spend our time where it will count the most? crying into the one that can really help us. Next time we got trouble, next time we got problems, I, I get amazed at people that, that put it all over Facebook, all their trouble and all their problems. I get amazed at it. I have people go, why aren't you on Facebook? That's why. Because <laughs> I might hog the thing then. I'd tell them all my troubles. They'd start telling me about their troubles. They'd make me want to tell them about my troubles. I'd be on Facebook all the time. You think that's something? Y'all hear what I'm going through. Quit whining. Quit crying. My, mine's a whole lot worse than yours. <laughs> and I'm not against Facebook. Please know. I know that keeps you in touch. It lets you know what everybody's doing. And you need to know what everybody's doing. I got some scripture about that, but we'll leave that alone. We, we won't be too hard this morning. 
But if you got troubles, why not talk to the Lord about it? Because, you know, I like the song that one of our old governors of Louisiana sung a long time ago. Someone to care, someone to share all your troubles like no other can do. Sing it with me. He'll come down from the skies and brush the tears from your eyes. You're his child and he cares for you. You remember? Oh, someone to care, someone to share all your troubles like no other can do. He'll come down from the skies and brush the tears from your eyes. You're his child and he cares for you. You, you know what I want right now? And I don't want it for me. I want it for you. If you got trouble or you got troubles and you want the Lord to do something about it, I want you to come up front right now. You can just stand. Hey, don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. And you're not. You're coming. I just felt checked of the Holy Spirit. He said, tell them come. Tell them come. You got troubles? I want to be like this verse here, this poor man, this poor woman, this poor guy. Don't make no difference about the age. Cried, and the Lord heard me. I want you right now to cry unto the Lord. I want you to cry unto the Lord right now. You know, when I say that, I'm not meaning like you don't have to shed tears. Like I'm fighting back right now. I'm not talking about crying that way, but I'm talking about talk to the Lord. Just let him know you believe this verse right here. I know the Holy Spirit had me stop for a reason, and it wasn't because I let you out early. Because he wanted to move, he wanted to do some things. He wanted to come down, he wanted to intervene for you. It may be a health issue. It may be for you or it may be for a loved one. Maybe for a family member. It may be salvation for somebody. It may be a serious financial need. You know, I don't know what it is. But you know, and he knows. I want a few of you. In fact, when I say few, I wouldn't care if all of you came, but I want some of you. You just feel something in your heart right now. You want to stand, maybe you even just feel real strong just go to a certain one when they walked up here. I want you to go stand behind them. Put your hand in an appropriate place up on their shoulder. Maybe on their head. It don't matter on their arm. And say, God, right now I'm asking you to bless my brother and my sister. I'm asking you to touch them right now. I'm asking you to, Lord, hear their cry. I know you will because you said you would. But Lord, hear them right now. And Lord, intervene right now. Help them right now. Lord, we're crying unto you. And whether we're saying it out loud or not, but in our inside in our heart, Lord, we know what we're here for. We know what our trouble is. We know what the trouble that we represent is. And we call on you right now, Lord God. We call on you, Lord Jesus.
this touch, Lord. Hear every heart that's up here right now. Hear this heart. And Lord, touch it. Let your hand, Lord, rest upon the situation. Take care of that trouble, Lord. Take care of that trouble. Lord, you said you delivered them from that trouble. Lord, take care of it in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, there's no, there's no sickness. There's no pain. There's no disease. There's no physical. There's no material problem too big for you, Lord God. Touch them, we pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask you to take this trouble. Take this trouble. Take this trouble. Take this trouble. Take this trouble, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for hearing, Lord, your servant, Lord. Thank you for hearing, Lord, as he cries unto you, Lord God. And, Lord, you know everything about all of us, Lord God, and we praise you right now because, Lord, there's nothing, nothing too big, nothing too hard for you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, yes. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. Someone to care. Someone to share all your troubles like no other can do.